Hello everyone, my name is Susanna. I'm working as a researcher in Canberra at the Australian National University. We are currently in the Stoll Underground Physics Laboratory, one kilometer underground, where we are going to look for mysterious dark matter. We are heading deep underground in Sapol, which is the Stoll Underground Physics Laboratory. It's going to be a quite long way, about half an hour through these dark tunnels. It's so otherworldly down here. It's kind of, you know, beautiful in its own way. Mm -hmm. So it's about nine kilometers of a drive and every step that we take uh, lower and lower, there, are, there is less cosmic radiation reaching us because the rocks are blocking the cosmic rays. This is important for the dark matter experiment as these cosmic rays and interactions with matter could mimic dark matter events. And we want to be sure that what we detect with our detector are the real dark matter events. Mark 455 up. Okay, so we are going to encounter a truck on the way up. Mm. Yep, so Stall Gold Mines opened in 1981, so we're just over 40 years of operation of this gold mine. Obviously, Stall was you know, established as a township. Um, was established as a township on the back of gold. So that was sort of 1850s through to 1925 was when we were sort of the gold fields, part of the gold fields, and then we shut down and it wasn't until this mine opened in 81. Mm. LV265 down the main. So what's the highest temperature? Well, it, do, it doesn't, it still doesn't get above 30 degrees. I mean, mm. I haven't experienced it above 30 degrees underground. Mm. So on Tuesday, when we had the bushfires coming through here, mm -hmm. it was 38 on the surface and it was 29 down at the lab. Oh, okay. um, but it's the humidity. Mm. So, you know, the humidity on the surface is really low. Yeah. And the humidity down, the, down here outside is somewhere between 75 and 90. Mm. So that's where the, the heat sort of comes in. Mm. So I think we are now almost uh, one kilometer underground. Uh, it's supposed to take about half an hour and for me it was more like five minutes. It's probably because it's a really exciting drive with all the miners cars uh, coming and passing by. It's an interesting idea that in a few months this place will become a home for some of the scientists. We will spend probably two to three weeks each here of course leaving in the evening and coming back in the like underground during the day to work and it's also interesting to imagine that our vessel that you were filming yesterday will be transported here through this tunnel so you might notice it's very shaky as the ground is not straight um, and that's also the reason why we are going to install everything inside the lab not before because I think our valuable PMTs would definitely fall off during this drive. So as we approach, I'm just going to firstly highlight where our refuge oh, chamber yeah, is, which is here on the right. Mm -hmm. So this is where we'll go should anything go wrong. Um, now this is the front door. This is the way we'll go in, mm -hmm. just so that you can see everything. We'll park around the back today. Yeah. Now that the air is flowing, it's not that bad. But inside the car, it was very hot. We get everyone to give yourself a good scrub of your boots. I'll get you all to put booties on to come in. So use the machine, peeling first, step down until your foot's covered, and then straight back. Okay? Mm. Thank you. This is our main experimental hall. Save is going to sit around about here. Yeah, at the moment the walls are covered in tech flex. Um, so that's to prevent the rate, any additional radon gas coming out of the, the walls in here. Obviously that entire decline is just soil, soil walls and the radon gas is accumulating as we come down here. So once we're down here, we don't want any more coming from outside 
into here. We've got, well, theoretically they're 12 meter high ceilings, perhaps probably just at the highest point. But um, as I said, to the crane is about eight metres high. Currently we are in SAPL, which is the Stoll Underground Physics Laboratory. It's a uh, laboratory which will try to look into the dark matter signal that a experiment in the Northern Hemisphere in Italy uh, has been recording for about uh, 20 years. So our lab is uh, more than one kilometer underground, while the other lab in Italy is 1.4 kilometers under rocks in a mountain. It was very exciting, especially when the tunnel started. Um, I was like, well, I am being transported to another world. It is important to be underground because all this um, ground above us is protecting our detector system from all the cosmic rays and the activations uh, from the cosmic rays in our detector. It's quite exciting being here because we've all been working on this project for years and to finally see the laboratory in person, it's uh, very exciting, it makes it feel very real and we've still got a lot of work to do to make the experiment happen, but it seems like it's close in the future now. Yeah, actually the spot I'm standing on is the spot where the VITO vessel will be located. Um, yeah, and I guess the next step for the vessel will be to be transported down the mine. The transport of the VITO vessel will be a very complicated procedure. We'll have to go very slowly with this large vessel through the narrow uh, tunnels and be very careful not to damage anything, uh, but I'm sure we can manage. And then the vessel will be positioned here and we'll start um, our experiment. So I've just collected a few samples of dust from the mine, different spots from the walls, and I'm going to collect some from the floor and also outside the mine. Uh, environment here is generally dusty, especially on the way down. Um, it's very important to know what radioisotopes are in the dust because any decays of the radioactive isotopes could mimic dark matter events. So um, at the ANU in Canberra, but also in collaboration with other universities working for the Center of Excellence for Dark Matter Particle Physics, we are focusing on identifying and um, quantifying the radio impurities in all the materials in our dark matter detector around in the environment. We want to know exactly how much of each radio impurity is here so that we know what we can expect as our background for the experiment. Finally, I can see it's here, it's ready, and it gives me you know, hope that very soon we'll be able to start our measurements and then look into confirming or, or uh, refuting the Dama Libra signal.